It's a Monday before the start of a new season, so there's loads to talk about on this week's Monday agenda. We're going to be looking back at the defeat at the weekend, a lot of frustration for fans. Lee Griffiths getting booed, Odson Edward looks like he's out the door. Who's going to replace him? Let's get straight into it. As always, before I get into the topics, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you do like the videos. I'm setting myself a new target of 5,000 subs. I'm on about two and a half, so it is ambitious, but I do want to get there if I can. So please subscribe to the channel and do like the video so more people get to see it. So let's get straight into the topics. So we're going to start with the 6-2 defeat to West Ham in pre-season over the weekend. A lot of frustration from fans about this performance, and it is justified because, you know, at this stage of the season, Celtic should be progressing and getting to the point where they're going to be for the new season the new season kicks off this weekend so i know it is worrying for fans context to it it's a pre-season game before a champions league qualifier so celtic aren't really going to be up for it but you would expect from the team that Ange had out especially in the first half that they're going to get some sort of performance worrying signs in the sense that celtic are being caught with their game plan the second goal the one Vasilius barkas was caught out for that came from a break. Celtic actually had six players in West Ham's final third. So they're going to be caught in the break if they're going to be playing this high line. They need to have some sort of protection there to avoid that break. Because Welsh is not the fastest defender in the world. If he's starting at centre back, they need some added protection for that situation. Because fast teams will, it will be the same as last year. Where fast teams will just play one ball over the top and they will be through on goal. And Vasilius Barkas is not the best goalie in the world to be dealing with that situation. The second goal that I want to talk about is the West Ham goal I think it was their first goal Murray plays the ball out they're trying to play out from the back under pressure he plays a bad pass one pass West Ham are in and they score so I'm not going to you know crucify Murray for that he's a young defender who's trying to implement this new game plan he's not the best on the ball as we've seen against FC Michelin and it is the game plan that Celtic are playing they're going to try play out from the back they're going to get caught at some point and it's better to get caught in pre-season than it is to be getting caught in the middle of the normal season so i'm not too worried about the defeat it was a pretty poor performance but at, at stages you know you're seeing the Ange philosophy as well so i mean it's a pre-season game against west ham the week before a champions league qualifier i'm not too worried about the defeat i'm worried about the small little things like barcas's positioning for that goal everyone's been talking about it for now again Personal things aside, I'm not going to crucify Barkas for, for anything other than his goalkeeping. And I don't think he's a good enough goalkeeper. We've spoken about him loads of times on the Huddle Breakdown. We've spoken uh, uh, spoken about him on this channel. The data and the numbers suggest that he's not that bad. That he's not making all the, these mistakes. But for me, a Celtic goalkeeper has to be outperforming whatever metrics you're judging him on. So if you're judging him on shot stopping, if you're judging him on his passing out from play, he needs to be a step above average. He needs to be a step above where, I don't know, the St. Johnson goalkeeper is going to be. That's where that's where you need the Celtic goalkeeper to be. And Barkas has not proven to be that. His confidence doesn't look to be there. I don't think he's good enough passer out from the back to justify you know him being in there ahead of a shot stopper um and he's just not a good enough shot stopper we've seen time and time again he just doesn't save the things that you think he should save and his positioning was all over the place at the weekend so I'm worried about that position. Scott Bain's definitely not the answer. Fraser Forster is not the answer for me either. He's definitely not good enough with the distribution from from the back f to justify getting into this team that's going to be playing out from the back. That's going to be playing a sort of a sweeper uh, sweeper keeper system. So I don't know where Celtic are going to go with their goalkeeper. But that was the worrying sign for me is that. Scott Bain's the replacement. Scott Bain should have saved that Oko Flex goal as well. So I mean we've seen with Scott Bain last year. He's not a world class goalkeeper either. So you know, Barkas needs to up it a lot for him to bring the fans around and for him to get his confidence around as well. But I, I, I want Barkas to get a run of 10 games. That's all I want. A run of 10 games to see if it's a once-off thing that, you know, these mistakes will happen every maybe 15 games where he's not playing regularly or if it's you know if he's making mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake that's when you can really judge a goalkeeper Barkas just hasn't played enough games in a row to see whether he's going to continue to make all these mistakes as the season unfurls or whether he's going to gain his confidence grow in confidence and get better and stop making mistakes when he gets that run of game so jury's still out on him 
Jerry is very much not still out on on Twitter, but I'm just going to say I, I want him to get a run at the start of the season. And if he's not good enough, then then get rid of him and get in a, a replacement. I don't think it's uh, panic stations just yet. Preseason, you know, preseason games still still ongoing. So I know that'll be an unpopular opinion. Let me know what you think. I think we should give him a chance. But, you know, I also admit he hasn't proven to be much cop just yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm not very confident in him, but I want to see what he can do over the course of, you know, half a season, maybe. If he's not good enough, then get rid of him. Simple as. But another talking point from this West Ham game is Lee Griffiths. Lee Griffiths was booed by the Celtic fans. And there's been a lot of talk about this. Was it fair? Was it unfair? Should he still be at the club? Should he not be still at the club? What do we do with Lee Griffiths? And I thought was quite good in his handling of this. And, you know, he's not going to tell Celtic fans how to feel because, you know, we've been here a long, a lot longer than he has. And I think that was a really good answer. I think the Lee Griffiths situation is fairly obvious. I, 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 I'm baffled by how many people are actually, you know, considering that, he should still be at the club and thinking that he's deserving of his new contract. Lee Griffiths, on a, as from football terms, complete football terms, has not been a professional for two, two, two and a half years now. He has continually turned up overweight, out of shape, unfit, not good enough to do his job. The last time he had a really good season was 2015-2016. That was five years ago. Since... Lee Griffiths had that amazing season, that goal-scoring season where he just tore things to shreds. Moussa Dembele has come to the club, destroyed all around him, got a move to Lyon, did well there, and got a move to Atletico Madrid. Odson Edward has come to the club, developed as a player, been absolutely brilliant for two and a half seasons, and now he's getting a move to a different club. If Lee Griffiths had a kicked on from where he was, he would have got a move to the club, but he didn't. He rested on his laurels, he got unfit, he was unprofessional, and he just was downright not good enough for Celtic Football Club. So, from a pure football perspective, for five solid seasons, he hasn't been good enough. Why do people think he's going to be good enough now? Secondly, personal terms. You cannot bring the name of Celtic into disrepute like he did over the last couple of months and still be expecting to be a Celtic player. It's plain and simple. I I genuinely cannot understand a single person that thinks Lee Griffiths, you know, will forgive and forget, let, let him move on, he's good enough, we need him at the club. We don't need him at the club. We don't. We don't need that trouble. We don't need the issues that he brings with him. We don't need his unprofessionalism. We don't need him turning up unfit in the middle of December and not good enough to be in the team. That's what we don't need. We don't need the trouble of Lee Griffiths. We don't need him at the club. It's plain and simple for me. Get rid of him. Should have never got a contract in the first place. And especially after the news that broke out about him, should have, ne- should have immediately had his contract revoked and should have been sent out of the club. That's where I stand on Lee Griffiths. And I do not have any sort of sympathy for him. I do not waver on this point at all. He should not be a Celtic player by the start of the season. And I just, I'm very, very disappointed that he's going to be. And I think the booing is justified. I, I, I'm not normally one for, you know, booing players in any sense, you know, per, getting personal about things and taking things from outside of the world of football and bringing them in and launching personal abuse. But Lee Griffiths, not that he deserves abuse, but he, he definitely does not deserve to be wearing the Celtic shirt this season. So I think it's plain and obvious he shouldn't be a Celtic player. And I wholeheartedly disagree with anybody who says otherwise. But I guess one of the reasons that people want him to be a Celtic player is that Alton Edward looks to be out the door. If you were to believe the reports that are coming this morning, Brighton are going to be upping their bid for Alton Edward after the Champions League fixture against FC Michelin on Wednesday night. Their fee is reportedly going to be £20 million for Alton Edward, and he looks to be out the door probably by the end of the week, if not by the start of next week. So he might get the start of the season and then he'll be off to the Premier League, be that to Brighton or to Crystal Palace, who are also linked with him. So this is a big money move for Odds and Edward. I think Brighton will be a good move for him because, again, sort of like Brentford for Christopher Ryer, it's a progressive club. Brighton really need a striker. They need a goal scorer. Odds and Edward is absolutely that. And Graham Potter is trying to do things the right way. 
hasn't worked out for him very well because he hasn't had a striker they've been creating a multitude of chances they've been you know top of the xg table for years now that's all you hear about brighton but they need a goal scorer Odson edward will provide that so he'll get game time and i think he will be like musa dembele develop as quick as musa dembele and he'll probably get another move to another club that are bigger than brighton so i think it's a good stepping stone move for chris or for Odson edward and it's a good deal for the club 20 million pounds for a player you know that really doesn't want to be there is a, a big fee add that into chris Ryer's fee that's a lot of money for the club so they think the more worrying about this is the fact that celtic don't have the replacement ready to go so with chris Ryer, they had starfell or they had viscovich coming in and it was one or the other they were going to be there at the club and you know starfell was announced almost immediately after Chris Ryer was announced to be leaving the club. We don't have that with Odson Edward. We don't have that replacement being linked with the club. Celtic have made a couple of signings, and this is where we're getting to see what Ange wants and where the club is heading. We're probably heading away from the classical number nine, the classical striker. Celtic have always had sort of a, you know, a front man that was leading the charge, be that the whole way back to Henrik Larsson's days or Gary Hooper or, you know, Odson Edward, Mr. Dembele. They've always had that main striker, that main threat. I don't think Ajeti is going to be that. But the club seem to be moving away, moving away from that structure. And with Ange, it seems to be more a Liverpool structure, say, for example reliant on goal scoring wingers and that central focus will be more of a false nine or he'll be a link man he won't be a goal scorer and i think that's a decent enough way to go about it so for hashi has obviously come in lila abada has come in and been quite exciting to watch i think and now they are also being linked with christian lovrich so lovrich is playing for garcia in uh, the croatian league he scored 17 goals last season and got a couple of assists he's a winger as well so this is the type of player this is the model of player celtic are looking for fast goal scoring wingers who are going to get into the box play more an inverted role as opposed to play, being an out and out winger and i think this way makes sense for celtic this game plan makes sense for celtic's line out for the the squad that they have and it's something that we spoke about on the huddle breakdown loads of times that celtic are almost trying to cross into the box to players who don't want to be there or don't necessarily get on to crosses if we're playing inverted then that means the, the wingers who necessarily might not be the tallest might not be the strongest in the air are getting shots off rather than getting crosses off with low conversion rates so i think this is a, a decent move for celtic lovrich again boys analytics did a good thread on him all the stuff that he brings to the team looks like he makes a lot of runs into the box he plays more inverted as you can see from this heat map this is where he likes to play he likes to cut in on his uh, on his right foot and get shots away from outside the box a bit like ryan christie takes too many shots outside of the box but if Ange can sort of nullify that and get him to take shots from good areas i mean he scored 17 goals last season he's a good goal scorer and he takes loads and loads of shots so i think with abada if celtic do get lavrich in with verhashi ajeti if he gets fit then you've got the makings of a really good threatening starting lineup going forward there but again you're going to need to get these players in defense you're going to need if you're going to be playing a high line you're going to need another defender and i think that's what celtic need celtic need another center midfielder i think and i do believe that they need another center half to play alongside starfelt because if christopher julian's not going to be fit for the full season his injury profile suggests that he's not going to be i don't think stephen welsh is fast enough he got caught in the break too many times there for this high line if celtic are going to be playing a high line if they're going to be playing a high pressure if they're going to be playing a counter press if the teams get past them i don't think welsh has the pace to keep up if the ball is played up uh, in behind him and i think that was shown against west ham a couple of times and murray as well if he's going to be playing the odd time it again it, it you can't be relying on players this young to be playing this system which is risky and expect to be successful so a couple of signings are needed and Lovrich seems to be a decent enough signing for what Celtic are looking to do. Again, I we're in pre-season, so it's hard to judge this team, especially it's such a transitional period for Celtic with uh, Postacoglu coming in. And you're trying to be fair on him. You're trying to be fair on the club for the signings that they're making. You're trying to make sense of it all. But 
it's not even August yet. By the time we get to August, you know, we'll have a couple of games under our belt. By the time we get to September, I think that's when I'll start getting really harsh if it's not working with Celtic because that's when the game plan will be, you know, you'll expect it to be fully formed, you'll expect them to be fully fit. And at this stage of the season, we're only in July. I don't want to be crucifying the club and crucifying crucifying Ange for what he's trying to do. I think there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of transitional periods to handle. There's a lot of players coming in and out of the club. So when Celtic have their full full squad in, they've got their full game plan implemented and they've got their full fitness, then we will start to see whether or not this is going to work. But until then, I will be withholding my judgment on a lot of the players. So what do you think of the team so far? What do you think of the defeat? What do you think of Lee Griffiths? Please don't tell me you agree that Lee Griffiths should be staying at the club. But do leave me a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm trying to reach 5,000 subs, so I would appreciate anyone subscribing to the channel if they do watch the videos. And do like it as well, because it helps more people see it. This was the Monday Agenda. We will chat to you next week. Good luck.